Sunday night, another exciting episode of Annulment Proof, the only place on YouTube where marriage gets defined. I would like to try to prove that one more time with uh, fun stuff regarding Father Mike Schmitz and NFP. We got Jason Everett in there uh, doing his part. But both of these guys are, I'm going to, I'm going to do my best to prove them all wet on this. And you do your best to give me a hard time in the comments. Uh, and I'm going to respond because I can't get to these guys. I've tried, you know, any kind of debate or follow up questions. The answer is like no, no comment pretty much. So uh, let's let me get this on the screen here. Hang on a minute. Pardon me. Here we go. Let's. All right. OK, we're going to listen. We're going to talk. I got some other stuff we're going to put on here. Um, hopefully it won't take too long uh, uh, here. Roll it that the church accepts. Uh, the next one is similar. A person's asking, are contraception and same-sex sexual relationships wrong for the same reason that they're taking the fruitfulness from the sexual act? So these are two big questions. Um, but I guess right. tackle the first one, like, um, why is natural family planning something that the church even accepts? Anyway, he just asked, is, is uh, what did he say? Is, is homo and contraception the same? And the answer is yes. When you start changing the purpose of uh the reproductive organs as christopher us would say anything goes and that's why we're having all these contradictions and why they have to keep stamping out little brush fires here here anyway sorry for interrupting yeah well i think it's they're both really good questions and i think that the the beginning of it would be um so what is uh what is well, be asked, we could basically ask the question, what is sex for? Like, what is, what's the very nature of sex? And we'd be able to say, okay, so. It's for procreation. That sounds so dumb. I got to stop interrupting because it messes the flow up. Anyway, he goes on. Okay, here we go. So we know the, we know what a thing is based off of what it is for. So we, we know the what it isness when the we purpose. know the what it is forness. The and purpose. so we know that a, t a chair is for. It, you know, a thing is a chair if we know what it's for. It, this is for sitting on. Oh, it's a chair. It's of that's for, the chair nature of chair. This is a thing it. to place things on. Oh, um, that's what it's for. Okay, that's that's the nature of tableness or platformness or whatever something like this. So the nature of sex we know by the okay, what is it for in the first place? And it is we can just by analyzing this and breaking it down in the most uh, raw sense, it is for the promulgation of the species. Right? It's for procreation. Okay. If you, if everyone would just say that, we'd have no problems. But now it's not, it's not just for procreation anymore. Uh, ever since we started uh, justifying NF, not justifying, that's not the right word, approving of NFP. So let's listen to what he says. And I got some more nerd notes to go into here. And we also know that one of the things that it naturally does, biologically even, is it it binds or unites the two people engaged in this behavior. Okay, fine. So this is where they talk about unity and bonding and all that kind of stuff. That is secondary. That's what he doesn't say. Uh, it's a secondary purpose, a secondary end. And so, okay, we recognize, in fact, the uh, classical or <laughs> not classical, but the uh, rhyming or alliterative way to say this is baby and bond, babies and bonding. So we know that the word is forness, and that's what we know what it is. Purpose. And so what we recognize is if I go against either of those things. If I, I actively work against, and this is for Raul, like the, the key distinction, if I actively work against any of these things, if I work against bonding. Wrong. If you work against the primary purpose, you are violating the nature of the thing. If you work against the secondary purpose while not working against the primary purpose, you are not violating the nature because the secondary purpose is not essential. That's what they've got wrong. This is kind of what everyone knew once upon a time. Um, that would be, I am artificially inseminating someone uh, against their will. There's not a bonding kind of situation, or even yeah. I'm just simply, we're simply using each other for the purposes of procreation. We'd All right, hold on, hold on. Share this tab instead. Sorry, it's nerd time. Pardon me. Hang on, blah, blah, blah. Oh, I got to make sure my picture gets in here just so I don't lose my voice because I don't know how to work this stuff. Hang on. All right. Uh, the primary end, okay, uh, th another theme we're going to get to is that all this, when you say serious reasons, it they violate everything with serious reasons. It happens, and I'm going to get into that in a minute. So the primary end of marriage is procreation. That's the, phys the, the natural end, procreation. 
and the super, you know, and education of children. That's the purpose. Cassie can do be 17. What he's effectively saying is we now have a second purpose bonding or whatever the heck you want to call it. But you, now you have co-primary essentially, and there can only be one first place. So, uh, and if you, and if avoiding pregnancy is okay, now we have a new primary purpose, which is quote bonding. Um, okay. So he also said, uh, he talked about, wait, he, he didn't say this yet. So let's go back. Sorry. Let's do this. Here we go. Show us to have instead. All right. Hit it. Recognize. Okay. There's something that's violating the very nature of that thing. And the converse is true. Where is if, uh, one were to engage in the sexual act simply for the binding part, but not for oriented towards babies. And I was actually actively working against that. Then we'd recognize that, okay, so I'm violating in some way the very what it is forness of the nature of sex. Natural family planning doesn't actively work against the nature of sex. Or uh, If it's for procreation, it works against it. I think I missed something there. Let me go back here real quick. Sorry. Okay. so. Thomas, say Thomas. He, okay, he, eh. reproduction is an animal nature sort of thing. Here, see. Okay, secondarily, there is a there is in man an inclination to things that pertain to him more specifically, according to the nat that nature which he has in common with other animals. We do have some things in common with animals, like eating, reproducing, sleeping, stuff like that. It just is. And in virtue of this inclination, those things are said to be the natural law, which nature has taught to all animals. OK, so nature has taught <coughs> it to us and to baboons, everybody, such as sexual intercourse, education and offspring and so forth. OK, so when humans reproduce on a natural level, it's the same thing as when any other animal reproduces as far as the purpose goes the essential purpose. All right. Sorry about that. Here, back, boom, go. Oh, let's, let's, re let's, let's rewind just a tad, just because I think I missed something against that. Then we'd recognize that, okay, so I'm violating in some way the very, what it is forness the purpose of the nature of sex. Okay. So if, if marriage has more than one purpose, then all you have to do is not define one of the purposes or have it undefined, which is bonding and whatever bonds for you, bro is like freaking cool therefore uh you know if you like two dudes or however many you want or whatever the thing is if it's bonding you're not you're you're working toward a purpose of marriage that is essential so that's why we have homo today it's because of nfp and i'm going to get more than that in a minute natural family planning doesn't actively work against the nature of sex or work how sex against how sex works it works with how sex works for example if you were to okay look look back at um i use this example sometimes and i think it, the analogy bears out uh the nature the nature of eating okay so uh what it is for well the, what it is for is for nourishment that's uh yeah this whole eating and uh, they allergy and this eating analogy fails and i'll explain why in a second but it doesn't work at all which overturns this whole argument the, the primary and secondary. Sorry for jumping in. I got to stop doing that. What it does. It also, as a, <laughs> as a uh, intrinsic second effect, if you want to say, is pleasurable, typically uh, eating. So he just said the secondary effect of eating is pleasure, but it's not the primary. The primary is nutrition. So you can eat cake. You can eat steak. That's my little Dr. Seuss imitation. So uh, either way, you're getting nutrition. You may like one more than the other or whatnot, but that's secondary because you're getting nutrition. Cool. Is not only nourishing, it is pleasurable. And so sometimes uh, we all know people who will eat for pleasure, um, but they're not violating the nature of, they're not violating nourishment. That's right. When you eat for pleasure alone, you're not violating nourishment. Uh, you might not be getting very good nutrition, so that's not cool, but it's not like, you know, it's like, hey, you, you're, if you're just eating for pleasure, then that's lame, but that's not violating nature. And the reason is because you're not doing something unnatural with the food later, like throwing it up or whatever. Duh. Okay, hold on. You, you, I Hang on. They're just, I'll have that next piece of cake because it tastes really good. 
um, but not violating nourishment. Or I'm eating that power bar because I need some nourishment, but I'm, it doesn't taste great. I'm not eating it for the flavor, but I'm not violating the nature of uh, the, the end of flavor. Now, on the other hand, if someone were to say, I'm eating this food and then I'm going to actually actively work against nourishment. So, um, I know so many people who struggle with this when it comes to like, I'm eating and then I'm going to make myself yeah, throw yeah. up. They'd, they'd be actively working against the very nature of uh, of eating. And, and it's so interesting because if we meet people like this, um, and I mentioned people who are watching this and part of this conversation right now, that you realize this is part of your experience and you know this, like in your heart, you know, like, I'm not proud of that. And again, it's just, this is one of those situations where you ought not to be ashamed of this, but it's one of those things where you're like, this is a wound that's in me. And every time I do it, it hurts me a little bit more. And someone's like, no, it's just eating. It's no big deal. It's just eating. It's just throwing up. It's no big deal. But you know that your experience is like, ba -ba 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 bulimia. Ah, I'm deeper and deeper into this. So, because why? Because for you and I, eating is a human act. For animals, it's an animal act, you know? Eating is, a, no, it's, oh, hey, that gets back to Aquinas, doesn't it? It's all an animal act. We have in nature common. He's He's got a problem here because he's saying that the uh, the conjugal act is different for animals than it is for people. Sorry, that's wrong. For, uh, it's, it's not, it doesn't reach their soul. But for us, this is a human, everything we do as human beings is a human act. Therefore, to work against this intensely human act, it doesn't reach the soul. All right, well, let's digress here just for a second. Sorry, here we go. Uh, view this tab. Okay, here, boom. Um, okay, so the, the 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 soul is not part of the conjugal act, and it is not essential to it. But if you're going to have NFP, you have to have quote the soul as part of the act. Otherwise, it violates the purpose of the act because you're trying not to get pregnant. Cool. You're trying to have your soulmate or whatever the heck. Uh, therefore, there's no the, the, to to put the, a soul or to define the soul in a legal document is impossible because it's subjective. Put your heart and soul into it. What does that mean legally? OK, so. Pope Paul VI, who is a doctor in canon law, knew there was an issue with that. He saw these annulments after he did a. Humanity of Etan stuff and the annulments taken off with after Vatican II, he's like, whoa, he tried to put the brakes on things, but it was kind of too late. And here's where he tried to do it when he addressed the Roman Rota in 1976. Therefore, it must be completely denied that lacking any subjective element, marriage no longer exists as a juridical reality. What that means is you cannot base marriage on something subjective. An element of marriage, it means, is something essential to it. If you have to have every element or there ain't no marriage, but there cannot be a subjective element. Subjectivity cannot be defined. It cannot be consented to because you can't fulfill the contract legally if we don't even know what it is. Like give it your best shot or try really hard. That's not contractual, okay? You can't take someone to court for that, okay? Sorry. So anyway, therefore, there's no such thing as subjective marriage. It doesn't exist. So if you say um, bonding is essential to marriage and the marriage act, you are now making something subjective to be essential, which you can't do. Uh, and back here is a, we already we already talked about this. The animal nature. We have the same nature as animals when it comes to reproduction, sleeping, eating, scratching fleas, whatever. Um, my dogs have some fleas. I've got a couple on me. My One of my favorite things to do is get them between your fingernails and go like that. I found I got a flea comb recently. Anyway, so let's, let's uh, get back on the tracks here. Hold on. Is to hurt ourselves. Now, if there's something... <laughs> even somewhat more powerful or more uh, core to who we are than eating is the, the sexual act. Yeah. Oh, God, brother. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to blow this out of the water in a minute. Hold on. To actively work against bonding or to actively work against uh, babies, you know, procreation. Um, that would, it does something against our very hearts. Um, okay hang on I, I i may okay let's just keep going i might have to rewind here now what an nfp does or natural family planning would do is it would be more along the lines of saying okay i'm not violating 
procreation at all. I am simply, here's this Jack and Jane, and they are married, and they're entering the sexual embrace when Jane is not uh, fertile for the sake of the unitive or the, the bonding element, but they're not thereby violating the baby or the procreative element of, of sexuality. Yes, they are violating, and here's why. And here's why that analogy with the food thing completely fails. Um, the, oh, the, the, I think I wrote it down. I, can we, let's go back to this just because it's easier. Hang on. Do this tab instead. Okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. The eating analogy does not work because digestion is always on. The eating analogy would only work if fertility were always on like digestion. This is why this whole thing like NFP, NFP is, is just like, uh, NFP is just like fasting or something. No. When, if the primary purpose of eating is nutrition, anything you eat is going to give you nutrition because you are always digesting. This sounds so obvious, but we need to point it out. Your digestive system is 24-7, 365. It's always on. So no matter what you eat, you are always fulfilling the primary purpose, which is nutrition. Always. The NFP analogy would work if fertility was always on. If the wife was fertility 24 or fertile 24 7 365 then you could pursue all the secondary ends you want because you are always getting the primary purpose because fertility is always going but if fertility if your digestion were only working in mirroring the reproduction the fertility then there could be you could only digest uh like one week out of the month or something like that two weeks out of the month. Okay. So if you ate all your food on the, during the, uh, non-digestive window, just like if you had all your relations during the non-fertile window, you're violating nature. You're violating the purpose, which is nutrition. So I want to eat a ton of food. I'm dieting. I'm eating all my food in the second half of the month. I can eat as much of whatever and I don't get fat because I only eat when during the in, non-digestive window or I only have relations during the non-fertile window and everything's cool. Isn't that groovy? That's why Cassidy Canubi, I think it's 108, says to sin in a subtle way when they talk about their time. That's what they're talking about, NFP. OK, so it's like, hey, I, look at me. I'm just eating normally. But we know you know that it's only during when your digestion isn't working, okay? This is why the food analogy is completely freaking retarded. It's so stupid, but people don't, I don't I don't know where their brain is, man. All right, hold on here. Sorry, let's go back. Go back, boom. All right. Much like, um, okay, I'm eating this power bar because it's giving me nourishment, not because it tastes good, or I'm eating this cake just because it tastes good, not because it gives me nourishment. Let me rewind that just so I can get my brain going again. Hang on. Element of sexuality, much like, um, okay, I'm eating this power bar because it's giving me nourishment, not because it tastes good, or I'm eating this cake just because it tastes good, not because it gives me nourishment. So yeah, like I said, primary, secondary, doesn't matter when you're eating because your digestion is always on. In those cases, I'm not violating the nature of food. And in That's right, because duh. NFP, I'm not violating the nature of sex. No, NFP is violating the purpose and the nature of the conjugal act because you are subverting, impeding, blocking, wrecking, moving away from, doing a workaround of the primary purpose, which is procreation. So you want marriage without the procreation. That's what you want. So you're getting it through manipulating nature, violating nature, okay? That's what's going on. So how do you get around that? How do you solve that problem? You do it by changing the definition of nature. It's just like, oh, I I keep getting all these speeding tickets. I'm, I'm just doing 120 down my street every day and I get these tickets. Well, how about you don't slow down? Let's just change the speed limit. Hey, cool. Or we'll just change the definition of speed. 
and now everything's fine. That's all that's going on. If that makes any Jason, do you think that makes yeah. sense or is that no, kind of that, like that makes a lot of sense? Because I think behind Raul's question, a lot of times. Um, by the way, I got some more nerd stuff to get through, so I don't go back and forth on the screen. And we're going to hammer some things that's kind of cool in the end. So hang, hang on. Is a sometimes an assumption that the Catholic Church is completely against controlling birth. The Catholic Church is completely against controlling birth, and the reason is because the nature of the conjugal act is procreation. So when you start controlling birth, like you, you. Uh, are violating the purpose, okay? Like I said, all we gotta do is change the purpose and everything's up for grabs. And I'm gonna get to that in a sec. Because you hear birth control, right. therefore controlling of any birth is immoral. Um, but natural family planning, because it is so effective, it's like more than 99% effective, could be abused. It could be used. Uh, uh, that's like saying abortion could be abused it could be, because there are some botched abortions. So, you know, it's really not perfectly effective. It's intrinsically evil to violate the nature of something, which is why Cassidy Canubi 59, was it 54, said no purpose, however grave. If you're going to change the nature, if you're going to violate nature. In a contraceptive yeah. manner, because in order for an act to be morally good, you need both the motive and the means to be good. OK, sorry. Yes, the and it doesn't matter. What your motive is for an abortion doesn't matter. The means are of how you're going to eliminate this baby are wrong. You can't eliminate babies at all, okay? Doesn't matter. Uh, if something is intrinsically evil, it doesn't matter. The ends don't justify the means. And the ends in this case is we want marriage without babies. That's a violation of nature. That's a violation of increase and multiply which is not a duty, by the way, which we'll also get to. And so then of P, the means is good. It's a properly ordered way to plan your family, but the motive could be evil. Of just like, look, motive, we don't want any more kids because I, I hate diapers Jason and I want a five car garage and I want a new. Nobody cares about that. Nobody says that. Nobody says, I don't want, I hate kids and I want to fight. No, that's like, the other, this is all about, it's like 99% of the time, 95% of the time, my wife needs to work because I can't, I'm not making enough money and she doesn't want all these kids or whatever. That's what it is. It's just feminism. Who said a jet skis, so forget human life. It's a materialistic motive. And so even if your means is just, the immorality of the motive would make the act unjust. Um, you could have a couple contracepting where their motive is good. Well, the doctor told us one more pregnancy and my wife could die. So oh, you hear about this so much. By the way, <laughs> Uh, the culture of death and the, the well, there's a lot of anti-life people everywhere. They'll tell you all this kind of stuff. And you, there, you also hear stories of uh, uh, people have lots of kids after the doctor told them don't have that anymore. Just say no to C-sections, too. Sorry. So we're going to use, you know, contraception or we're going to sterilization or abortion. Well, you might have a moral motive, but you're using an immoral means. And so with natural mm -hmm. family planning to be for it to be used in a good way, you need both a serious reason to postpone the next pregnancy. You don't need a serious reason to do what's natural. OK, I don't need a serious reason to eat steak or cake or fast. I don't need a serious reason. I can do what I want. OK. Uh, if. NFP is unnatural. It doesn't matter how serious your reason is. You can't violate nature. That's why this is, that's why it used to be serious, grave reasons. And now it's anything goes and every, every, everyone needs to do more NFP. Uh, you know, and family planning is like a requirement. It doesn't require any, people aren't stupid. They just, they just go to contraception because if, if, if marriage isn't about babies, what difference does it make? That's why NFP is allows the culture of death to continue because you have what appears to be the Catholic Church endorsing it. The Catholic Church condemns NFP, but the human element here is like, okay, we're kind of going for this because we've said that babies and bonding are both essential, which is incorrect. That's just wrong. That's not doctrinal. That's that's just a novel weirdness created uh, out of thin air by the spirit of Vatican II. Okay. So, oh, my cat is messing with me. Or somebody is. Anyway, whatever. Um, where's my phone? Is it in my pocket? I think someone's here. Hang on, let me push pause just a second. Hold on, hold on. All right. 
I guess it's fine. Uh, so I was on a roll there, but let's 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 keep playing. And then the use of natural family planning together. And so the church will never tell you how many kids to have. Well, you, you need to. Have the church will never tell you how many kids to have. Duh. You don't have to have any kids. You can have 22 or you can have zero. The church does not. There, there is no duty to procreate. That's the lie that all NFP and all contraception is based on, that procreation is a duty. Therefore, there can be an exception to duty. That's important to note. And we'll get to that in a minute. They have this many. But God will. Um, if you listen to him in prayer and with natural family planning, it invites you to open your heart to him in that way. And you can open your you should open your heart to God for everything. But you don't. Let God's the guy in charge of planning, not you. That's why increase and multiply is a question of nature, not duty. So you get to discern whether you're going to go to Sunday mass or not, because that is a precept. We must go to mass unless grave cause. Okay. And you get to judge that. And so you got to follow your conscience on that, but we don't have to have babies unless grave cause. No, we just have to not violate the nature of marriage. And people are thinking, well, NFP is the same. It doesn't matter what time of month. It's all the same act. Yeah, but if you are purposely stepping around the purpose, like waiting for the bus at 3 a.m. when the bus doesn't show up until, you know, 10 in the morning and saying, well, I didn't, I'm not trying to not go to school or work. I'm just, you're waiting for the bus and it just happens to not be here. That's what it's like. Sorry, here we go. Boom. And couples who use it have a divorce rate under 4%. Uh, okay, yeah, the low divorce rate thing. The reason I this is my speculation. It's hard to find any statistics on this. Uh, I think NFP causes divorce, just like contraception causes divorce. Um, but the small number of Catholics that are into NFP are going to be sort of more like JP2 religious type Catholics. So they're kind of like not really keen on divorce. So you're going to have a lower statistic of divorces because you kind of have your semi holy roller types that are doing NFP. Okay. They're not your super trash Ola Catholics, they're going to be kind of good Catholics. So they're probably not going to be getting divorced so much. That's why there's a, so there's a correlation. Those type of people don't get divorced, just like the type of people that use NFP. But NFP, just like contraception, makes the self the focus because all you're doing is pursuing the secondary end, which is essentially self, even though they've dressed it up as, oh, it's this total gift of your, oh, no, 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 no. If 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 there were no pleasure associated with the conjugal act and there'd be no talk of NFP, none of this stuff. It's all about the secondary ends, just like why you like to eat the cake and not get fat. Well, we like to have relations, but not get pregnant. Same exact thing. The difference is. Fertility is not constant, but digestion is constant, which is why the analogy completely fails. It's super obvious, but people don't see it. Okay. I mean, the church is onto something here. I mean, yeah, it's difficult, you know, but chastity is a virtue we got to practice in marriage. Okay. You want some you want some chastity practicing, my man? Here's how it is. It's like two weeks after pregnancy, that's when you do chastity. When she's pregnant, that's when you do chastity because you cannot pursue the primary purpose while she's already pregnant. So there's some chastity for you. Okay. You want a little sacrifice? There you go. And, um, uh, when else? I, I, I guess that's it really. Um, I think there's one other time. I oh yeah. Menstruation. There's no fertility there either. It's only possible because just like if you have a glow in the dark object, and you turn the lights off, it's going to glow in the dark for a little while afterwards. So you can get pregnant during menstruation, but it's it is uh, just a it's a fact that there is a window of zero fertility at that time. Even though sperm can live for a while, that is a time when there is no fertility from her, which is why St. Thomas Aquinas says the precept of not during menstruation still binds under the new law. Okay. 
marriage and well. Because, you know, God's plan for human intimacy, intimacy is not that you can only become one flesh with your wife on the times that she's fertile. This whole one flesh stuff, you become one flesh one time when you consummate the object of consent, which is the right over the body. That's when you become one flesh. Only that. You don't come one flesh. Just like you don't get rebaptized, you don't get remarried, you don't get re one flesh. It's one time. Uh, but these guys, because when they say that marriage is the, is a subjective bonding communion of life and total gift of self consent is perpetual and it keeps going so you never quite get there so consummation really never happens until death because you're always trying to consummate the object which is a total gift of self for the life of you know what i mean yeah is any other time it's immoral well no because i mean she's only fertile like a week of the month and then after no you don't have to max out kids that's right every uh, all the time it's immoral if there's no kids no as long as you are not subverting the order you are not putting the secondary ends first which is i'm just pursuing uh non-procreation can't do that for menopause not at all by the way menopause is natural the bible has examples of pregnancy during menopause casti kanubi 59 gives the okay to menopause because it's natural pregnancy can occur there is the right over the body. It's perpetual, okay? But during pregnancy, that's different. There is no right to the debt during pregnancy because no conception can occur. It's same with right to the debt during menstruation. You don't have it. There is no right. I could go on and on about debt. There's all sorts of stuff I could tell. Here we go. And if that was God's plan, then that would, the vast majority of marriages would be spent in continence and abstinence. But it's not his plan because he's created the babies and the bonding to go together. And there were not the ones that should separate it. Yeah, this whole baby bonding going together stuff. Um, as far as in the law, that has never been said anywhere in the church except until Vatican II. Contraception is wrong because it stops the primary purpose. But after Vatican II, they say contraception is wrong because it separates the babies and the bonding. So you change the reason why contraception is wrong. And that's because they've changed the purpose of the act in de facto. You cannot change gravity by a stroke of a pen and they can't change the purpose of marriage by saying so, but they're, everyone's going along with it to keep keep the act up Good. but god's the one who can create seasons of infertility and fertility so great question great answer father hey there i hope you all right now let's get into the notes here uh i i i okay here let's just do this sorry boom here we go share this tab instead now then let's just go let's just we'll blow this real quick okay yeah and this is my theme here it's about serious reasons okay uh uh we're gonna get into this serious reasons it's just called it's like hard cases like mormons used to be against oral abortion but now they go if you have serious reason abortion is okay and serious reason has now made adultery okay in amoris Laetitia because serious reason made nfp okay in 1951 check this out okay uh oh by the way um there are only two ways in which married persons can come together without any sin at all, namely to have offspring in order to pay the debt. So that's the same time as Aquinas, because marriage has one purpose, which is offspring. OK, so one spouse needs to be trying to have, get pregnant at any one time and the other spouse can be paying the debt or both spouses can be trying to get offspring. But there's no such thing as both spouses paying the debt to each other because only you only need one to request if that makes sense should be obvious but anyway um now here we go uh pius the 12th this is where all the fun started everything was kind of normal in the catholic world as far as law and stuff where we left the reservation and how we got to uh uh, all the uh, crazy stuff going on with Morris Letizia, Caitlyn Jenner, and the, everything else you can think of. There's a long list of stuff. Came from this. Pius XII, Midwives, 1951. This is where it started. 
uh, as far as the legal basis. So to avoid its primary, this, okay, they're talking about how to get how to make NFP okay. To avoid its primary duty, the duty of the marital act, which is to create kids. That first, that's wrong. There is no duty, but they're saying basically to use marriage without a grave re to, to use, to avoid the primary duty, to avoid children without grave reason would be a sin against the very nature of married life. So what they're saying, what he is saying there is you can, you can violate nature if you have grave reason, that is exactly what he is saying. And that's why Vatican II had to come in and rescue this pile of garbage statement by saying nature now has a new primary purpose. And that is bonding, love, unity, whatever you want to call it. But we're not going to say that that's the primary purpose. We're just not going to talk about whatever's primary. So we sneak it in there. We're not going to say that this race has a first place, second place, and third place finisher. We're just going to say everyone must participate together, okay? And we're not going to say who's first, second, and third anymore. They're all important. They're all really, we just, no, you know, we don't want to exclude anything. It's all, it's all first place, second place. They're just all really good people that are in the race. And we're not, that's what's going on. Now, they have, I've already gone through this in other videos. Okay. Here, check this out. Uh, wait, I, I'm sorry. I'm 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 a little scatterbrained. I'm trying to stay focused on my point. This when so, let's keep this in mind. When we're discussing the nature of married life, you can't change nature without sin. Okay, so they are saying we're going to basically change nature, but with a grave reason. Once you do that, it's Katie bar the door. Now, by the way, here's why marriage is not, or the baby produce production is not a duty. This is from the uh, notes from the uh, the Dewey Reams Bible on this section in Genesis. Increase and multiply. This is not a precept, aka duty, as some Protestant controvertists would have it, but a blessing, rendering them fruitful. For God had said the same words to the fishes and the birds. In verse 22, who were capable, who were incapable of receiving a precept. Okay. In other words, God made the conjugal act naturally to produce kids. That's it. And he said, this is what it's for. If you use it to not do what it's for, you are violating nature. And it doesn't matter what your grave reason is, which is why Casti Kanubi 54 said, we don't care what your grave reason is. No reason, however grave, you can't violate nature. So now they're doing it because of all the political pressure in 1951. Okay. So now since you can, uh, uh, so now let's force forward to Morris Letizia, kind of skipped over some stuff, but he says in there, for sufficiently serious reasons to limit the number of children. So they're basically saying, look, you can limit kids, which is natural, for if you have serious reason. Okay. Yeah, but not through using the conjugal act to do it. That's what they're saying you can. So once we can just justify changing nature for serious reason, what else can we do for serious reason? The answer is anything you want, as long as you can get away with it publicly. And it's he's that's why they're trying. They're going to try to, uh, probably going to... Uh, so they're they're trying to do it with homos. That's their that's their main thing, I think. But they're they're starting with adultery because now they've created this this divorce culture and annulment culture. Now you're going to create an, an adultery culture. What are you going to do with all these people? Okay, now in Morris Letizia it says where for serious reasons. Okay, we've got more serious reasons coming in, such as children's upbringing. A man and a woman cannot satisfy, and if they can't satisfy a woman. Uh, uh, the cannot satisfy the obligation to separate. So you have these, they're talking about when people are uh, living, what do you, you know, they're, they're, when people are living in adultery, that's what Amoris is all about, Amoris Letizia. But they have serious reasons, okay? And they can't separate. Then if you go, then if you go to the footnotes, they take it and they say, for the good of the children, 
you can allow certain expressions of intimacy because we're because it's all about serious reasons. So if you have serious reasons, you can allow people who are living in adultery to have certain expressions of intimacy. Golly, I wonder what those could be. Hmm. You, you ready for a certain expression of intimacy? Hmm, I don't know. Um, anyway, they are now permitted. Footnotes here. These are the footnotes where Morris Letizia, ex, basically they permit for grave reasons, certain expressions of intimacy for people living in adultery. Okay. Uh, and they also footnote Gaudium at Spes 51, because that's kind of dovetails. The, okay. These, based on the nature of the human person and his acts. So this is what he was saying. He, there, this, the conjugal act isn't just an animal thing. It's a human thing, which means we have to add um, a, a layer of uh, non-defined quality to it and make that actually the basis, the personalistic norm. Okay, listen up. Anyway, these, based on the nature of the human person and his acts, preserve the full sense of mutual self-giving, uh, which is apparently the, the new um, uh, um, object of consent, mutual self-giving, uh, and human procreation in the context of true love. There's a this is this is this is more weaseled words right here in the context of true love. So you have to have everything in the context of true love. So when a couple zebras make a baby zebra, it doesn't have to be in the context of true love. But when people do, when people make a new baby in marriage in Catholics, it must be in the context of true love, which means the primary purpose of the conjugal act is true love. Whatever that means, we don't know exactly but it's whatever you want it to mean, which is why love wins is an ironclad sledgehammer to defeat marriage because all of the JP2 Catholics are hanging on to true love is the context of marriage. And the homos are like, yeah, we'll take that because we have true love too. And that's since that's the that's the basis, the context of marriage. Everything else is secondary. True love is primary. Game over. And you're not going to let go of your NFP, so we're not going to let go of our homo. Shut up. That's exactly what's going on. They're just going to keep it going. Is there anything else? Okay. We should get, uh, I think we got to get that one more thing here. Um, we already went, we already went over this, but I think it's worth repeating. about subjective versus objective if your purpose of marriage is subjective it is not essential do i need to repeat that maybe i should if your purpose if a purpose of marriage is subjective then it cannot be essential which means you cannot pursue it independently it cannot be your primary pursuit and they say, well, we're going to pursue bonding or we're going to pursue mutual love, which is just another way of saying they just want the pleasure. That's it. That's that's all it is. It's just dressed up language. Wink is everyone knows it's Catholic contraception. Pious, excuse me, Paul VI. It must be completely denied. So he's Paul VI is denying effectively that he's he he's contradicting Humanae Vitae when Humanae Vitae says that the. Actually, he's not. But listen, when Humanae Vitae says the procreative and unitive significance cannot be separated, a significance is not an end. It's not legal. But they're they're playing with words. They're saying that babies and bonding are inseparable. That's a le those are legal purposes and they're essences, and you cannot separate them. Wrong, because you have to have one primary. Therefore, it must be completely denied that lacking any subjective element, marriage no longer exists as a jur juridical reality. That means we cannot use anything subjective in the definition of marriage, which means bonding is not a legitimate primary purpose. Okay, we ranted. We had fun. And I want you guys to try to kick my booty here uh, in the comments. You can, uh, you know, click like and stuff. I don't really care. I just, if more people can see it, that's good. And the reason I'm here is because I've commented myself to death 
for years and nobody cares. Nobody wants to. So I got to do what I can on YouTube. Um, but yeah, you guys give me a hard time. I love it. Peace, baby.